I think a lack of experience is a great help. I think it's sort of easier for you to come up with something different. I'm a maker. Indeed, but what did he make? He's the inventor of the backless vacuum cleaner and the founder of Dyson, a company that is now worth billions, which made him and his family the fifth wealthiest in the whole of UK. Still, he says... Ours is a life of failure. <laughs> I mean, every, every day, you know, you, you have thousands of failures uh, in order to get the one success. But how did he overcome those obstacles to build the Apple of appliances. What were the challenges he faced and what can we learn from his journey? In this video I will answer all of these questions and take a closer look into the life and legacy of James Dyson. So stay tuned! One of the things he always got asked in the beginning was but James, if there were a better alternative for a vacuum cleaner, Hoover would have invented it. That was before he quit his job and asked an old friend to work on a project behind his garage. For 12 years, he was in heavy debt and fought the toughest battles to protect his IP. 13 years later, he was able to manufacture it as a sole owner of the business and the machine that he designed, tested and built on his own. Now his net worth sits at around $26 billion. By uniting engineering with design, he leveraged his technologies and assets in multiple areas. It's mainly cleaning and filtering or heating and cooling, often in combination with air. Dyson products come with a price often three times their alternative, resulting in a billion dollar profit. Finishing the book Inventions by James Dyson inspired me to share his personality and learnings he wants to pass to future generations. He himself learned very much from his role models and funnily enough he inspired people like Steve Jobs to build extraordinary products. Thus his approach to innovation is a testament to the power of enthusiasm, creativity and determination. He proved that you don't have to be an expert to solve the world's greatest problems, as experts often don't question existing limitations and rules. Scarred by his father, passing away when he was nine, he considered himself a misfit, which he saw as an advantage later in life. It began when he started running in his first race. He was absolutely sure to come in last place, but with his determination he was able to persist and catch up with the leading group and, in the end, even land in first place. This spirit empowered him throughout his life, not giving up, overcoming the pain barrier. He decided to double down and win again, so he read that through hill sprints on the sand you become stronger in your legs to build endurance. So he got up at 6 before school and put in the work. He says that it's the same with inventions. You go through multiple stages. but. People think there's such a big leap because it looks like an act of brilliance. But in reality it's just thinking solution oriented for a long time and putting in the hard work while staying enthusiastic and free from common conceptions which limit creativity. Nonetheless, he also took inspiration from existing products, same as he did from other persons like the founder of Sony. For example, he looked at airplane industry to add the lightness of to everyday products. Influenced by seeing his father pass away, he decided not to work on something that he doesn't like, but rather try his luck with what he's actually passionate about, which is designing and ultimately inventing amazing products. Building a breakthrough application was one thing, but getting it onto the market was a totally different ballgame, one for which Dyson wasn't really ready. Dyson had thought that licensing the idea to a company would be easy and manufacturers would be happily team up with it. His dream of vacuum revolution was cut short as he was rejected time and time again by companies who saw his product as a threat to their established business. Starting from a domestic company and failing to get the desired results, he turned to explore opportunities overseas. Initially. He backed a deal with Mway, a US-based consumer products company. But it backed out at the end and released its own version of a dual cyclone vacuum cleaner. Hoover, the top vacuum company in the UK, refused to collaborate 
unless he gave up his rights to his invention. Third, Electrolux, another well-known name in the consumer electronics industry, told him point blank that it was not possible to sell vacuum cleaners without bags. Dejected but unwilling to give up, Dyson kept looking for opportunity. In the mid-1980s, Dyson finally was able to manufacture and sell his vacuum cleaners by licensing to a Japanese manufacturer, Apex, which released a pink-colored upright cyclonic vacuum cleaner called the G-Force in Japan for a staggering price of $2,000. The expensive device became a status symbol in Japan to the point that everyone wanted to get their hands on it. The G-Force also won the 1999 International Design Fair in Japan, proving its worth. Seeing the success of the G-Force, a Canadian company, Iona, introduced the product in Canada with the name of Drytech. Having had some financial success and realizing that if he really wanted the technology out there, he'd have to steer the ropes himself, Dyson set up a company called Dyson Limited in the UK. It wasn't easy as he reportedly took a loan of approximately $850,000 by putting his home as collateral and invested his life savings in order to breathe life into his vision. Not only did he establish a factory but also a research center as it was important to him right from the beginning to come up with new ways of building better products. He launched a vacuum cleaner, the Dual Cyclone, in 1993 that he designed, developed all on his own at a price of $400. While it was no doubt costly to the extent that retailers were hesitant to carry it in their stores, within two years it was outselling Hoover and became capturing market share rapidly. Contrary to the opinion of the majority, people were fascinated with this innovation. New technology, clear and minimalistic design and the fact that it allowed them to see the junk build up as the vacuum cleaner sucked it in. Over the years, he worked on more than 5,000 prototypes before he finalized his product. He failed time and time again, but improved iteratively and presented the end result, a state-of-the-art vacuum cleaner. Whilst Dyson focused on the UK, he licensed the vacuum cleaner technology to Phantom Technologies in North America from 1996 to 2001 and brought in a CEO for him to focus on the design, innovation and engineering. By 2002, every third household had a Dyson vacuum cleaner with global sales of more than $10 billion. But he wasn't satisfied with that. Much like his starts where he went from one invention to another and another one, one crazier than the other, his ambition was to make enough money to pay his next steps, which resulted in him building an empire from revolutionizing cleaning even to education. His next super success was in 2006 Airblade hand dryer, which you see at nearly every public restroom. Gone were the days of traditional hand dryers doing a lax luster job as soon as the sleek and elegant Dyson Airblade made its way into the market. The Airblade used Dyson's digital motor to power a stream of air at rapid speed to dry the hands within 10 to 14 seconds. Plus, it used a HEPA filter to eliminate bacteria from the air, cleaning the hands hygienically. Moreover, it costs less to run and is eco-friendly. In 2006, the Dyson air multiplier, an electric fan with no blades, was announced and it soon gathered attention worldwide. After all, people had enough of the visible blades and grills that accumulated nothing but dust. Despite his tough journey, he stuck to his values and never sold the company and thus always optimized for long-term success. His approach to question orthodoxy has set him apart as a true visionary. From disrupting vacuum cleaners to rethinking education with the Dyson Institute. By combining art, design, engineering and science, he transformed crappy products into amazing products. One of his mantras was difference for the sake of it, as he always put his products first, which is admirable considering it took him one and a half decades to really being able to monetize it properly. Okay, but that's still not enough. When he moved to become more of a businessman, he understood that communication 
is another key factor. Especially when you're innovating, something you need to do is take people along your journey. Basically, his approach to sales was become a teacher of his product. Therefore, his sales training was drastically different to the typical sales approach. But his emphasis on education didn't stop there. He was struggling with the availability of engineers. So he developed a program where engineers work for him three days a week and he pays for the education as a deal with sacrificing a bit of vacation in return for them. That was a game changer at the time. Now let's take a step back and reflect on his story. Dyson failed 5126 times to be exact before finalizing the vacuum cleaner prototype. The washing machine had to be discontinued. The robotic vacuum cleaner project didn't really pay off. The electric car project had to be scrapped. The ventilators the company produced amounted to nothing. These are just a few of the failures, but they could have easily be dismantled any other company. Dyson learns from failures and makes progress by delivering valuable lessons from them. It highlights the importance of taking risks, being bold and not afraid of failing. After all, it's just another opportunity to make things better. So how does his company look now? They have a profit of $1.2 billion in 2021. There are more than 14,000 Dyson employees and they invest 10 million per week in product development. If you're ready to follow in Dyson's footsteps and create something truly remarkable, start by being different for the sake of it and focus on constant improvement. His story really gave me motivation as it shows how curiosity and passion mixed with determination can make a lasting impact. Thank you for listening and feel free to subscribe.